You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. How much longer, Chris? Not long. We'll stop soon as we find a place. Where? Look around. We saw the last shade two days ago. That's a buzzard up there circling the wagons, and it's been following us since dawn. It's waiting for the next one to die. How's the boar? Still burning up with fever. He can't take any more. All right, honey. Hold up! Oh! 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 We'll stop here for a few minutes. There. There. Still the fever? Poor little thing is burning up. If I could just use a damp cloth. Try my handkerchief. Can we spare it? If he needs it, we can. Here, put this on your forehead. It'll make you feel better. How's that, son? This is the eleventh day, Christian. Eleven days of fever. He can't go on much longer. Hey, you said that on the third day, and then on the fourth. He'll take more, just as we all will. This is Arizona country. We've got 400 more miles, and we've already... Traveled almost 2,000. We'll do what we have to do. All of us. How's the boy, Mrs. Horn? About the same. Thank you, Charlie. Figure that Apache country is just due south. That's what you said we were looking out for, ain't it? That's what we've been looking out for. We travel due west, close together and button up tight at night. No fires if we can help it. Bad Indians down there, Chris. That's what we heard. And they travel in big parties, don't they? And we got five rifles. Five rifles, Chris, and a sick child, and four wagons, and seven dead, tired men and women. We was dead tired a week ago, and a month ago, and a month before that. And there were war parties back in Kansas, and we near froze to death in Colorado. And we was out of our minds with, the, with, with thirst last month. And we've kept on going. We've always kept on going. We always... It's this way, Chris. We've been doing a lot of talking and a lot of thinking. And... We figure we ought to turn back. Turn back. That what you all want? Turn back? Chris, we're about at the end of our rope. We're hungry and we're sick. We figure we better do it now, or we're gonna die out here. You turn back and I guarantee it. You turn back and try to go over 1,500 miles of St. Louis again, and you'll leave your bones bleached in one of those deserts between here and there. Or have your scalps taken off. Or you'll freeze to death in a, in a, in a mountain pass. And if you go on, what's going to happen to that beautiful child of yours? Listen, those 1,500 miles are behind us. They're all gone. The heat, the cold, the misery. You can, you can look back at them as things that have, that have happened. Not agonies you're, you're going to have to live with. How do you know there's not going to be more days and weeks and months like it? How can you be so blame sure? I'll figure there's only about four to 600 miles more to go. Four to 600 more miles, friends. And then we made it. We can't stop now. Listen, if we stop, we're dead. That's gospel. We're dead. Could be we're dead anyway. Just, okay, okay, just give me one more week. One week. I'll get us through. I promise you. I'll get us through. What about water? We're almost out of water. I'll get water. I'll, I'll find some. How, Chris? With a divining rod? I, I, I don't know how, but I will. I swear. The year is 1847. The place is the territory of New Mexico. The people are a tiny handful of men and women with a dream. Eleven months ago, they started out from Ohio and headed west. Someone told them about a place called California, about a warm sun and a blue sky, about rich land and fresh air. And at this moment, almost a year later, they have seen nothing but cold, heat exhaustion, hunger and sickness. The men and their families 
are now one with the animals and the wagons and the landscape, and they stare straight ahead, numb and glassy-eyed. They are dust blobs whose lives have been reduced to a single function, forward motion. The man in the lead wagon is named Christian Horn. He has a dying eight-year-old son and a heart-sick wife, once beautiful but now gaunt and drawn in the merciless desert air. Her husband is the only one who has even a fragment of the dream left, Mr. Chris Horn, who's about to go over the rim of a sand dune in search of water, sustenance, and survival, and who, in just a moment, will find himself heading into an uncharted territory known as the Twilight Zone. And now, back to our story from the Twilight Zone, A Hundred Yards Over the Rim, starring Jim Caviezel, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. A man had best not make promises he can't keep. I give you my word. And food and medicine for your child? We'll have those things. We'll, we'll have food and medicine and, and everything else. If you can just keep going. Just... Just keep going and, and, and don't look back. Look out there instead. L look west. We don't even know where that is anymore. Don't make any decisions yet. We can't stay here anyway. Once we're past the trail, we'll be able to rest a couple of days. I'm almost out of water, Chris, and food. I'll go up ahead, over that sand hill. I'll do some checking around. Stay here now, all of you. Martha, give me my rifle. Chris? Chris, you might... you might look for a shady spot. A pretty spot where we... where we can... <laughs> I won't talk about bearing our son. Not now. Not while there's life in him. How far you plan on going? Just over the rim there. A hundred yards or so. Might find a stream or something. Maybe some game. A rabbit or two. Never can tell. I guess that's true enough, friend. You never can tell. Stay close to the wagons and keep them bunched up. Hold on, Charlie. All of you. Just hold on. I'll be right back. What in God's name? Hey, everybody. Look what's over here. There's a road. Down on the other side. A, a road. Look. Martha? Charlie? Hey! Hey! Where's the wagons? Where... Where'd everybody go? <laughs> must have got turned, turned around there. Go on. Go up again and see. Yeah. See which way I'm looking. What's going on? What, what, what in the devil's name is going on here? Oh, the road's hard. And black. What the... What are these poles doing here? All these wires? Joe? Yeah? What was that? Backfire. What? Truck backfired. Oh, you sure? I thought I heard a gun go off. Not likely. Uh, might be one of those local boys shooting your sign. Well, if it was, I'll get the sheriff out here, but that didn't sound like any 22 to me. Look, Joe, who's that? Some guy with a rifle. Go in the other room. But, Joe... I said, get in back. I'll take care of it. Howdy. Did you see it? You, 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 did you see that thing? What thing? That monster. That, that big animal or, or, or monster, whatever it was. It almost hit me. Monster? 
No, I didn't see anything like that. If there was anything, it never got to here. It must have. It went by me just a mile or so back. You mean... You don't mean the truck. What's a truck? Hey, are you all right? You wouldn't have any water to spare, would you, mister? Any extra, I mean. Water? Sure. Come over here and sit down before you fall down. Here you go. Is all this for me? Sure. On the house. Well, thank you kindly. Uh, you want some more? You got more? Sure do. Whoa, whoa, now. You don't want to drink it too fast. Just how long you been out on the desert, anyway? Uh, how long? Uh, well, almost a year. Well, at least almost a year of traveling. Started from Ohio. I had six wagons to start with. One of them was burned by Indians, and one turned back. Indians? Wagons? What are you talking about? Say, mister, what, what happened to your arm? You're bleeding. Oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> well, I guess I did it to myself when that thing come at me. I rolled out of the way. Thought it was a mirage, then the gun went off. Just a flesh wound, though. Not too deep. I'll have Mary Lou look at it. She's my wife. She used to be a nurse's aide. Mary Lou! Everything okay, Joe? The fellow here, he shot himself in the arm. He did? By accident, he says. You want to take a look at it? Oh, why, sure. I'll get some bandages out. Hand me a clean towel, will you, Joe? Sure thing. Got the first aid kit right here under the counter. I'll just set your gun over here. Oh, well, thank you kindly. Well, careful with it now. That's a real old-timer. Antique piece, isn't it? Uh, no. I uh, bought it new before we started out, but she's been used a lot, I guess. We're running low on bullets. I don't suppose you've got any ammunition around here. Oh, uh, no. We don't carry anything like that. This isn't a hunting area. What about Indians? The south of here's Apache country, isn't it? Why, sure. Well, sure, but there aren't any Indians nowadays. Well, I mean, not not hostile Indians. No? Well, not as long as we've been here. Well, how long you been out here? How long? Oh, well, a couple of years now. Where do you hail from? Well, we used to live in Phoenix. Phoenix? Yeah, Phoenix. Mary Lou's folks are from there. I worked for her old man when we were first married, and then I bought this place here. The restaurant isn't doing so well, but the truckers are starting to come in now with the interstate. Restaurant? Uh, you have food? Sure do. Just like the sign says. <laughs> On the wall there, see it? Right over the register. Joe's Air Flight Cafe and gas station. You don't understand a thing I'm talking about, do you? You've never heard of Phoenix or registers or nurses' aides or trucks or gas. Hey, mister, where are you from, really? Where'd you come from? Tell me straight out, why don't you? From from Ohio. I, I left the wagons back there and I, I, I walked up the rim to the hill and I, I thought I might find some water or something or some game and then I saw that, that, that uh, you know, that stretch of road out there, that black road and those those things you know running on it what things he means trucks hold on hold on you hear that you hear that there's another one it's all right it won't stop take my word for it well we heard tell it was a dangerous route but the most direct one to where california they say uh, they say no no take it easy friend we can talk about all this later no, I, I, don't, I don't have much time. I, I promised him I'd be right back. There you go. Your arm's all cleaned up with a bandage on it. I even made you a sling, see? Oh, much obliged. I just try to keep it clean now. I'll give you a roll of gauze and some tape. You're a... a, a nurse? Are, 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 you, are you the doctor? Me? I just sling hash and pump gas. Take two of these. Drink a little water to get them down. What are they? They're antibiotic tablets. They ought to keep away any infection. Where do you get this? Well, at the drugstore. Of course, you're supposed to have a prescription, but these won't do you any harm. How do you feel? Could I? Uh, 
Do you think I, I could buy some more of those pills off you? Oh, I don't sell them. But you see, I, I got a real sick boy back there. Back where? In the wagon, if I can ever find the wagons again. But you say that this will help a, a, a sickness. Sometimes, depending on what it is. How about a, a fever and a bad cough? Uh, it's worth a try. You've got a family? There was three wagons of us, but when I turned around to look back down, they'd, they'd gone. Well, maybe you better rest a while, friend. You, you know, lie down. Get washed up. There's a bed in back. Look at this place. The table's like, like wood, but they're not. They, they can't be. And the legs are all silver and bright. That's not silver. It's steel. It's chrome-plated. What's that thing in the corner? Jukebox. Oh, what? Plays music. You put a coin in it and pick a tune. Here, I'll show you. Hey, where's that coming from? From inside. Didn't you ever see one of these before? You got a... You got a man inside? Playing his guitar on, on, on my account? Let him out of there right now. Turn it off, Joe. There, that's better. It was a bad idea. All these things. Where am I? What is this place? Come with me. I'll show you where to wash up. Wait a minute. That that picture. Where do you where do you get it? The calendar? Pioneer West Insurance Company. That's a picture of my covered wagon. Look, 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 just like my wagon. Oh, that's just an old lithograph. The date? That can't be right. It, it says, it says April. But the year's all wrong. This is the year of our Lord, 1847. But this calendar says it's, it's, it's not even the same century. Oh, my dear God, how could that be? Easy now. What's going on here? Who are you people? Where am I? No. 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 No! You better stop him, Joe. He'll get himself killed. Come on now, fella. Come inside. Please, please, somebody tell me where I am. One dollar and eighty-four cents your change. You keep it, doll face. Ah, uh, thank you. Say, uh, pretty lady, if you don't mind my asking, what time you get off work here? Oh, not till late. But you better not let that man in the kitchen hear you say that. He's my husband. Oh, uh, uh no offense, ma'am. <laughs> None taken. You come back now. I'll do that. Doctor still in back? He is. Been a while now. I made a club sandwich for the fella. You think he wants some soup, too? Well, you better ask Doc first. How's he doing back there? You have a fresh pot of coffee? Sure do. Shall I bring it to him? Not for your visitor. For me. I believe I'd like a nice, strong cup. Sit down, Doc. You look like you just seen a ghost. You look him over? I did indeed. And? Malnutrition. That's his major problem. Along with dehydration. Well, he's a strong specimen of a man, I'll say that. Tough stock. What else did you find out? You were right. He's an interesting customer, all right? Quite the character. The heat did it, or something, didn't it? I mean, he's, well, he's not in his right mind. I, I figure that has to be it. I'm not a psychiatrist, Joe. I'm an ancient GP. Not much past the school of castor oil and sassafras tea. But, you know, I think old Freud himself would have something to gnaw on here. How do you mean? He happens to seem very rational. Extremely rational. He can trace his imaginary life a whole lot clearer than some of us can our own. 
His recall of details is amazing. Or it would be if they were true. Maybe they are true. I, I mean, maybe he read it in a book somewhere. There's lots of books about the pioneer days. I even know a lot about my people, how they came out here. Now, one other thing. A little parenthetical aside, let's call it. The fillings in his mouth. There are two. Well, let's just say no modern dentist drilled them. Yeah, his clothes, too. They didn't come out of an Army-Navy store. No, they didn't. They're the real goods, circa 19th century. And you saw that squirrel shooter of his, Joe. Sure, but it's an antique. An antique that isn't more than a year old? A hundred and fifty-something year old gun, Joe, but it was manufactured less than a year ago. You said that yourself this morning. What's it add up to? Look, Doc, if you're trying to tell me... I'm not trying to tell you anything, Joe. That is to say, I'm not trying to make any point of my own. All I'm giving you is the benefit of some observations from an old hand. He says he's a pioneer, and when he climbed up to the top of that hill out there, he was living in 1847. That's what he said, all right. He seemed so sure. Well, we're three normal, rational human beings here, and we know that sort of thing doesn't happen. So he's suffering from some kind of delusion. But it's a delusion of the purest form. Frankly, I've never heard anything like it. Not with this degree of detail. The way he describes his wife, his son, the wagons, the, the other people, it's with genuine emotion. He's lying in there right now with tears rolling down his cheeks, worried about them. He said his boy was sick. He told me his boy was dying. And from the way he described the symptoms, I'd call it pneumonia. That's why he wanted the pills. Which pills? I gave him some antibiotics for the wound in his arm, and he wanted the whole bottle so he could give some to the boy. I don't get it, how someone could be so sincere. I just don't understand it. I don't either. Which leads me to the next question. Yes? What do we do with him, Doc? Precisely what I'm going to deal with right now. Where's your phone? Behind the counter. But wait, who are you calling? The authorities. So they can get him help. Oh, that won't do him any good, will it? They'll lock him up in a rubber room and throw away the key. Once he's turned over to the state, he'll get a thorough examination. They'll know what kind of help he really needs. Yeah, the funny farm. Oh, Doc, I've heard about those places. They're bad news. Nobody even knows you're in there. They, they can do anything they want. What are you suggesting? That we pack him a box lunch and send him on his way? You think he'll survive out there? He doesn't know where he is. And even if he figures that out, he'll... Die of heat exposure before the day's over. Uh, I want the sheriff's office, please. Oh, it just doesn't seem right. Yes, sir. Uh, is the sheriff there? Oh, in his car. Well, uh, that's even better. Can you radio him to get over to Joe's diner as fast as he can? Uh, we've got a man here who needs looking after. No, 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 not violent, but he should get here real fast anyway. Ah, uh, yeah. thanks. Oh, Joe, I hope we're doing the right thing. So do I. Well, at least he's calm now. As calm as any man would be if he suddenly woke up and thought he was past his time. That's enough, Doc. Well, hello, Mr. Horn. This book, it, it was in my bedroom. Well, that's the encyclopedia. I was looking through it. I, I found something. What? Well, this this here, uh, Horn Christian Jr., M.D., famous for his early work in childhood diseases, pioneer in vaccine research, born 1839, died 1914. Well, that was my son. That, that's Chris Jr. So I guess I'm either crazy or the world is turned upside down. But I think I, I got put here for a reason. Oh, you did. I just know it. For important reason. What are you doing? You've been gracious and kind, and, and I appreciate it. But I gotta get back. I'll just get my gun now. Horn, we want to help you. But help means rest and medical attention. I can't let you leave like this. Come on, son. Come over here and sit down. I've called for the authorities. The, the authorities? Well, listen, I, I don't know who they might be, but I've got no time to wait and find out. Horn, please. Hey, don't 
Don't go trying to stop me now. I know my purpose. I'm going to finish it. Well, my life don't add up to much. Listen to us. Please, Mr. Horn. You take your hands off my gun, mister. You okay, Mary Lou? Oh, I'm fine. The gun just went off when he took it. And blew out my plate glass window. Horn! Horn, come back! Sorry, mister. What's the matter with you? Horn, wait up! Are you all right? Those people were trying to stop me. Yeah? Where are you going? I, I have to get back to the Arizona Territory. You do? Well, that's an easy one. Don't just stand there. Get in. How's that? What is this contraption? Peterbilt 18 wheeler. Best long haul rig ever made. Where's your team? I ain't a teamster. Strictly independent. But your horses? All the horses you want right under the hood. Sweet, huh? Where you say you're headed? California. We were headed for California. Well, that's where I'm going. Good country out there, is it? Easy living, if you ask me. Everything a man could want. And land of work? Any seed you plant, it grows tall. That's what I heard tell. Suppose I could give you a ride all the way in, so I'd have somebody to talk to. I'm, I'm, I'm going to California, but I, I can't get, get there this way. What are you talking about? It has to be the same ridge, right, right around here. It was. Mister, you have to let me out. Say, look at that. Sheriff's car, moving like a bat out of hell. Please, I, I made a mistake. You, you've got to stop this. This machine! Hello, Doc. What's this emergency you got? Not exactly an emergency, Sheriff, but since I called, it might have turned into one. <sighs> Sheriff, you got to stop him. That's right. He won't make it out there. Hold on now. What you trying to tell me? Mr. Horn, Sheriff. Horn, is it? He's the man I examined. It's a long story and a pretty strange one. The point is, now he's run off. Well, where? He headed for the ridge, where he came from. So... He came in out of the desert? And now he's going back, about a mile up the road. Well, don't worry. I'll find him. Gotta make it. Just, just a little ways more. You there! Hold it! No, you don't. Not now. Drop the gun, son. I said, drop the gun. All right, now come on down real slow. The pills. I dropped, I dropped the pills. That's it. Now put your hands in the air. Got it! I said halt! Halt, son, or I'll shoot. Sounded like a shot. Maybe Chris got himself a rabbit. But he ain't even had time to get up the ridge yet. Martha! Forget something, Christian? Martha, what happened? Where'd you go? 
Where did we go? What do you mean, Chris? Where could we have gone? Well, when I looked down, I, I, I couldn't see you. Or the wagons. When? You haven't had time to go anywhere. Martha, I, I, I don't understand what you're saying, but I, I'm, I'm truly glad to see you. All this time. All what time? So much happened. First I fell and, well, somehow I shot myself and... It doesn't matter. I, I have so much to tell you. But how could oh, you? God, Chris, honey, you just left a second ago. What did you forget? Forget? And what's that in your hand? Oh, that's... that's a medicine. Medicine? Where did you get it? Never mind. Just... Oh, Lord. Give him some water. Give him... Give him two of these. I think... I think it may save his life, Martha. I see. As you say, then. Chris? Charlie. Short trip. Was it? Nothing much on the other side, I guess. You'd be surprised, Charlie. You'd be mighty surprised. There was a whole lot to be seen at that ram. A whole new land. And you know something else, Charlie? Us. People like us. We're the ones responsible. That's the truth. People like us. What's Orrin talking about? Listen, he's saying something. He wouldn't talk like that unless it was important. There'll be a highway. And machines. And a whole new land. And we're the ones who began it. What are you saying, Chris? Where'd you see all that? Up on the rim. It was all laid out before me like the... Like the New Jerusalem. Wide, hard roads, all black, with no holes in them, and machines, and... I gotta see for myself. Me too. Let's go. Up the ridge, he says. Chris, there's nothing down there. It's, it's just like this side. Sand and desert and miles and miles of nothing. Oh, but there will be, Charlie. There will be. Just you wait. It may not happen in our lifetimes, but it's coming. It'll be here, all of it, sooner than you think. If you can hold on to what I'm telling you and keep the faith. You didn't get him, Sheriff. I saw him all right, but I couldn't get him to stop. Fired a warning shot, but I didn't scare him none. Look, I wouldn't worry, Joe. He can't get very far. Don't worry, we'll find him. Thanks, Sheriff. Y you say he had a gun? That's right, a rifle. This it? It can't be. That one's all rusty, like it's ready to fall apart. That's what I thought. <laughs> he couldn't have done any damage with it. Look at it close, Joe. It is his rifle, but it's changed. It... It's just as if it had been lying in the desert for a hundred years. What's it mean? Who was he? Where did he really come from? I think... I think he went back to wherever he did come from. But... To where, Joe? Back to where he should be. Back to where he can make certain that the things it said in that book can happen. Back to a wagon train, heading west to California on a spring day in 1847. Giddy up, boys. We're going to California. And my son, too. He's got a whole lot to accomplish out there. A whole lot. Mr. Christian Horn, a farmer from the state of Ohio, one of the hearty breed who headed west when there were no blacktop highways or telephone poles or the solace of civilization. Mr. Christian Horn and family and their traveling companions, heading west after a brief detour through the Twilight Zone.
Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered while supplies last at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. A Hundred Yards Over the Rim, starring Jim Caviezel, with Stacy Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etcherson and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Peggy Roeder, Rick Peoples, David Darlow, Doug James, Peter DeFaria, Rich Kamenick, Meg Falcon, Zach Gray, Carl Amari, Roger Wolski, Diane Trice, and Irene Olson. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>